We're visiting the James R. Cease Farm in Gilbert, South Carolina. I'm with the owner-operator, Mike Kiesler. Mike, tell me how you got involved in all this agriculture. Well, uh, I had a neighbor. Uh, he grew up on a farm, and of course was a family farm, and I really didn't grow up on the family farm, but uh, he, he told me that, you know, what was my excuse? They had to do it, so what was my excuse? But I just loved agriculture when I was young, and and started working on this farm when I was 12 or 13 years old, and I'm 62 now, I've been here ever since. So uh, the original owner, James, passed away in 1977, and I've been here ever since, and one thing just worked into another, and you know, my wife and I are the owners of the business, and have been since 79. Uh, what are some of the crops that you've got going on here, and what's your strategy of when to plant things and all that? Well. What I like to do is have crops available year round. Oh. And we're fortunate enough here in Lexington County with producing greens that we can harvest really year round. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and with the strawberries, we got, we uh, farm yellow and green squash during the summer, summer months. So it gives us the ability to have crops available year round. Of course, we're in the strawberry field now and Oh, uh, that's something we started. This is our 17th year with strawberries. I know you've had a long association of working with Clemson Extension, or what are some of the ways that y'all have been able to benefit each other? Well, uh, we've worked with Clemson, you know, really since I've had any part in it, and even before that. Uh, it's a valuable resource. Things are changing, and it's, we used to go to meetings, and we'd talk all about the vegetable production, which that's still very important. But now we go and we talk about all the food safety issues and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different things. And the production part sort of comes in last, but that's very important and we, we rely on that information. I think I see Powell Smith, our extension agent in this area out in the field. I'm gonna go find him and find out what kind of research y'all are conducting on your farm here. Good, well come by and get some strawberries before you leave. Thank you very much. Well, you're the extension agent assigned in this county, but then of course you have statewide duties as an extension associate. And tell me about this research. This is an odd looking thing for me to see on a farm. Well, this is actually a weather station and you might notice the blue square there, it's solar powered. It runs off of itself. Mm -hmm. It's connected to the phone line, to the radio and to the web. And so we can download information from it uh, at home, remotely at our office, in Mr. Kiesler's office. And what we're using it for is that we're have a weather model that uh, is based on temperature and leaf wetness mm -hmm. and it tells us when one of our major disease organisms, the gray mold organism or botrytis, will form spores and be able to germinate in the field so that we can use that information to determine when the best time to spray is. And that's the backbone of this information, of, of this experiment right now. I know that on a lot of crop production their schedules where you go and do something every single week and I think y'all are trying to find ways to help the farmers save money and reduce the sprays by figuring out exactly when it's actually necessary. Is this what this machine is going to help y'all do? Right and it's, it's innovative in the fact that it tells us when the fungus has made spores as well as when the conditions are right for it to germinate and rather than have to spray the uh, strawberries weekly like normally we've been doing for decades, we're able to tell when infection periods occur and spray immediately after that. And with the fungicides we have nowadays, that uh, gives the grower enough uh, kickback ability to control the disease. And we're finding that we don't have to spray the strawberries weekly to produce a crop of the same yield and quality as that one sprayed weekly. And not having to spray so much excites the growers because it's cheaper for them. Uh, it produces a cleaner product and it's of the same quality that they're used to providing for the consumer. There's a lot that goes on that's still manual though in strawberries, I think, and y'all have to cover them up sometimes and uncover them. Tell me some of the, the, the hassles that are involved in having these beautiful berries made available to us. One of the most trying aspects of growing strawberries in the past was frost protection because we did it with overhead water that would freeze on the plant and give heat to the plant, give up heat to the plant to keep the berries from freezing. And that normally had to be done all night on cold, miserable, wind blowing nights and this, that and the other. Now we use a synthetic material called spun bond polyester and they make lightweight 
garden blankets, basically we call them row covers. So now we deploy those and cover the strawberries with those and it prevents uh, damage except under the most severe freezing conditions and it's a passive process. You apply it in the daytime, weight it down good and then go home and go to bed and sleep at night instead of having to stay up spraying water. Plus it saves resources drastically because we used a tenth of an inch per acre per hour. Ooh. So if you do that on a large far field for several uh, nights, you've used a tremendous amount of water and you have all sorts of attendant quality problems with the berries after that. So the row cover's been very much nicer way for frost protection and taking a lot of uh, worry off the growers. Well, and I think that's what it all comes down to. I think what you agents and researchers are doing is to benefit the farmers of South Carolina, to benefit the consumers with a t quality product and benefit the environment using the least number of inputs possible. And, um, and also we know that if we didn't have cooperative people to help us, we couldn't do this research. And I admire you and Mr. Kiesler for having formed this relationship. And I thank you for what y'all have accomplished here. Sure, would you like to look more closely at some of the row cover that we've got in the field here for the yeah. audience? Let's go out here and explore some of these things y'all are doing. All right, Amanda, let's do that. <laughs> 